our Thanksgiving Eve service. And what we think of that is just an opportunity to take time out before the big day tomorrow and, and give God thanks. And try to, try to you know, have an awareness of all the goodness that, uh, that God uh, blesses us with. So we do that through song, through hearing God's word and prayer. And so we welcome you to this this morning. We also invite you, of course, to Sunday morning. We'll be back at 1030. And uh, we also invite you Saturday at 10 o'clock to help uh, with the decorating of the, of the sanctuary. It looks pretty bare right now, but just in a couple of days it'll be uh, decked out with, uh, with uh, Christmas and Advent uh, materials. So we invite you to help us out. That's Saturday morning, 10 a.m. We also have our Vespers program coming up. That's December 8th. You probably saw something about it in the newspaper. That's good. And uh, there's a dinner after that. You're welcome to that as well. So many opportunities during this season to gather together and, and to be a church family and to welcome others as well. So a good time. Other announcements that we'd like to share? Good. We start with some prayer. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this time of gathering, this time to be together and to be mindful, to really stop everything and, and be mindful of all your blessings and that, and that uh, your Holy Spirit can awaken in us new depths of gratitude. In Jesus' name, amen.
we're going to confess sin, we're probably going to focus on ingratitude or not being thankful. And we can all identify with that. At some point, we, uh, as much as we try, there's still pockets in our lives of, of ingratitude. Let's uh, focus on those. Please pray with me. Lord, uh, we do come to you. It's a season, it's a time, it's a day tomorrow to be thankful and so many things to be thankful for, but yet we find in our hearts these parts and places where we are ungrateful. And we are sorry for that. If we truly understood your goodness, then we, we wouldn't be ungrateful, but our human nature and our sinfulness and this world and Satan, all of those things combine to blind us often to your goodness. And whether it's complaining or whining or many other ways or just not even thanking you, in many ways we demonstrate our ingratitude. We ask for forgiveness for that. We ask for your grace. We thank you just to start with creating us. And we thank you for saving us. We thank you for the cross. And we thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to sustain us and provide for us. So just to start there, sometimes we skip over those, those beautiful, beautiful gifts, life-giving gifts. Receive our confession. Receive our acknowledgement of falling short this evening in Jesus' name. Amen. Take some moments of silent prayer to reflect on those times when we forget God's goodness. so good that he's good to us at first, and then even when we forget and we're not grateful, he's good again through his grace. His goodness, his graciousness has no end. Amen. Would you please join me in another reading? Psalm 100 is just a great psalm of praise. That's part of being thankful. Let's do that together. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. And enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love, and endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. Yes, amen. Let's listen.
April 4, we have the children's choir, Susan and the adult choir. We thank you for those sounds of joy. We'll lend our voices as well to uh, number 797. Come, ye thankful people, come.
Okay, very nice. All right. Turning to God's Word, <clears throat> reading tonight from Psalm 95, verses 1 through 7, and of course we need some help. Let's pray. Lord, uh, we ask for your Holy Spirit to enable the reading and the receiving and the applying and the living out of your Word. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Psalm 95 is in a series here of psalms in the 90s and 100s where there's a lot of praise and thanksgiving, so appropriate for tonight. Let's listen for God's word. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with psalms of praise. For the Lord is great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land which is his hands have formed. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here we are, another Thanksgiving, and I feel like every year we try to get, get closer at achieving or understanding Thanksgiving and gratitude. If we had to explain it, we would just, you know, very simply say it's an awareness that, of good things. It seems it's deceptively simple. And then we get together tomorrow and Somebody usually says a prayer or a poem or something of, of thanksgiving, and, and uh, even the media to some extent, there's some acknowledgement of thanksgiving and gratitude. But unfortunately, it seems, it doesn't seem to last, does it? Does it? Um, any of a number example of examples. Um, the message is where thanksgiving starts, right? Well, let's also talk about where we don't find gratefulness in Thanksgiving. For example, at the grocery store, you'll find very little Thanksgiving there where Pam and Lynn and I fought over celery. <laughs> we didn't fight, but we did see each other at the, uh, at the uh, grocery store. But you can tell, I do the grocery shopping in, in my family, so I'm there pretty often. Normally, on a regular weekday, everybody's pretty calm, but this week, People are really tense, and you're thinking the whole time, you're thinking, let's be thankful, we're so thankful for everything, and meanwhile, people are ready to tackle each other into the, the uh, stuffing uh, set up there. Um, another place to look, even though it's the next day, is when people are tackling each other and running each other over um, at Walmart and then Best Buy and other places. Here you've just sat at Thanksgiving and you're thanking everybody. Oh, this is thank you, God. And then tomorrow you're ready to, to attack somebody over a large screen TV. <laughs> so this idea of, of gratitude, I'm so thankful that we have a day set aside for, for thankfulness and gratitude and Thanksgiving, but we're not getting it. We're still not getting it as, <coughs> as people in a society. So I want to talk about tonight, where does Thanksgiving start? Where does Thanksgiving start? It starts, I think, with some knowledge. And sometimes, again, that's not so easy. Sometimes that knowledge of God and his goodness and things like that um, gets lost. And you have a number of biblical examples of ingratitude can be applied here. Sorry. As, as unfortunate as it is from the beginning. Adam and Eve, they're in the garden. They have everything they could ever want and everything they could ever need. And yet, right there in the first, you know, quote unquote, five minutes, it's not enough. The serpent comes and says, wouldn't you like to be? Did he really say, 
wouldn't you like to be like God? And it wasn't enough to have the whole garden and to walk with God in that garden, to be in his presence. And what's that to say? That's to say that in human nature, there's something ungrateful about human nature. You and I may be ungrateful to some extent, but it's a human nature problem. It's not just a, a person to person. The Israelites were called to be God's people. That wasn't enough. They start setting up idols, and the prophets warn them, please don't do this. And still, not enough. At the heart of ingratitude, if we want to get to where Thanksgiving starts, at the heart of ingratitude, we have to understand that too. There's two main elements of that. The first one is self-sufficiency. And the Bible warns about this a number of times. When we get to that place, and sometimes it's ego and sometimes it's just laziness, but that place where we think, look at all that I've done. Look at all that I've made. Look at all that I've accomplished. Look at all that I'm about. What do you hear in that? It's pride, right? Pride is a, is a wall to get to in gratitude. And we get blocked in very easily. Sometimes it's subtle. You don't have to be a big ego person to forget that everything we have comes from God. Right? The other element of ingratitude is entitlement. Sometimes we get to this place where we think, this is mine. These two are related, by the way. They're not, you know, kind of separate. This is mine. Now, is it good to take ownership of things? Absolutely. Is it good to be responsible? Absolutely. We don't argue with those. But you know what I'm talking about when I say entitlement. Entitlement is, this is mine. And God, you can't get involved in it, and nobody else can. Sometimes we do this with people and relationships. Sometimes we do this with stuff. <coughs> Sometimes we do that with church, too. This is Jesus' church. But sometimes we get trapped in thinking... This is my church, and I can't let anyone or anything interfere with what I think. And again, we do this in life, too. You work with people. We all, you know, we deal with people who it's their way or no way. That's entitlement. And what's happened there, we don't say this with any judgment, what's happened there is a loss of sight of whose is it really? One of the foundational beliefs of uh, the Reformed Church in America, of Reformed thinking, comes from the Heidelberg Catechism. It's the first part of it. And it says, what is our only comfort in life and death? You know what the answer is? That I belong, body and soul, life and death, to Jesus Christ, my faithful Savior and Lord, that, that I'm not my own. I think that's where thanksgiving begins. When we recognize that this flesh and this heart and all of this, anything you and I have, it's not ours. Does God bless us with beautiful gifts of, of relationships and, and talents and abilities and, and a church and a community? And then little things like shelter and food? Absolutely. But we can't fool ourselves. It can happen. But tonight as we gather here, we can't fool ourselves into thinking for a moment that it's ours. Ours in the sense of mine and ours in the sense of that we accomplished it or acquired it ourselves. So therein lies the, the start of true thanksgiving. And what we're talking about tonight is not just a day with some turkey and some football. We're talking about a response to God's blessings. You heard in the scripture, and it's important to repeat it, in Psalm 95, where it says, For the Lord, God, for the Lord is a great God and a king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it. And that's the first thing I want you to see in there. Over and over in Scripture, thankfully in uh, Psalm 95, there are these examples of who created this place? 
God who created the earth, who created the sea and the mountains and all of that. That's the start of Thanksgiving also. When we have this knowledge that God created all of this, He gave it to us as a gift. Great study in the news today. Good timing. There's a study that says that when people experience natural wonders, when you go to the Grand Canyon, or you go to just some mountains around here, or you stand before the shore and the ocean, you are more spiritual. They did a study. They said, what are some things that make people, quote unquote, more spiritual? And one of the main ones was experiencing natural wonders. Most of us would say, you know, people in this room who actually, you know, would say, where do I experience God the most? Walking in the park, walking by the river. That's good. That's great. Because what happens is, I think, just personally, what happens is, when I stand in front of the ocean, and I look at the sky and the waves and the sand, and I think, this, only God could have created this. This is not some random, you know, mix-up of molecules and atoms. Somebody designed this. And whether it's natural wonders or the more scientists look inside and see that there's a design, whether it's in a leaf or in a bug, this was all designed by a, a wonderful creator. And the more we steep in that knowledge, the more we accept and embrace that knowledge that this was given and created, there's thanksgiving. There's one other hint of thanksgiving in here. In Psalm 95, the root to thanksgiving, or where it starts, says, For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep of his hand. And sometimes sheep is used as an insult that's not there. When it says that we are his people, that was God's design all along. For us to belong to to him, for him to be our God, and for us to be his people. That's what, that's what this is about. That's what when he created, you know, when he called the Israelites to be his people, and the prophets to teach them to come back, and then sending Jesus Christ, so that the whole world might become one of God's people, or part of God's people. And we're God's people by his choice, or God's people what that means is the sheep of his pasture, we belong to him. It's a beautiful, beautiful gift also that sometimes, admittedly, we take for granted. Many of us sitting here go to church quite regularly. That's great, we celebrate that. But you understand, and I've said this, we can get into such a routine that we forget this is a gift. That millions, in fact billions of people, don't experience coming into a safe place and meeting God and meeting God's people and hearing words of life in the gospel. So we want to remember God created all of this. We want to remember that we're his people. That means something. Yes, it's good to be a church member, but I want you to, to belong to Jesus Christ because you're covered by the new covenant, his shed blood at the cross and believing that he is our Lord our Savior. Once we, we increase this knowledge of thanksgiving or things to be thankful for, those roots of thanksgiving, there's one more thing that the scripture asks. Right? It says it over and over. It says, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Come into his presence with thanksgiving. Joyful noise, repeated again. Songs of praise. When we understand God's goodness, when we understand these roots of thanksgiving, it has to come out of us. It has to be visible. It has to be vocal to thank God. I'm not saying it's not there if you don't feel like standing up and raising your hands. But I do think there's a proportional relationship with the amount of gratitude we have in our hearts and the amount of joy we experience in life and express to others. It's as if, you know, the equivalent of this would be you're at a stadium and it's the home team and they score a touchdown. 
And everyone goes like this. Oh, great. Does that ever happen? No. Have you ever been to a Jets or a Giants game? You gotta scream. You gotta high five, or even if you don't know them, you're high fiving everybody. Why don't we do that here? Why don't we have that joy here? Certainly, being saved and going to heaven and experiencing abundant life, isn't that a little more important than six points? I think so. Do you see? There's a strong, strong connection between thanksgiving and joy. When you see a joyful person, you think to yourself, hey, they're, they're experiencing something, right? A lot of times it's thanksgiving. Because they're mindful of just regular good things in their life, but for a Christian, they're mindful that I've been saved. I could have gone to hell, but I've been saved because an innocent man went to the cross. Not only that, I was created by God. And he's put me in this beautiful, beautiful place outside, but also in here. And then he provides for me. And I have everything that I need. And if I need something, I can pray to him and ask him for it. And it shows up. That's, those are things to be thankful for. So we want you to think tonight about some things to be specifically thankful for in your life that God is particularly placed. But also, we want you to remember that he is created. He is a creator and creates good things for us to enjoy. These natural wonders that the study discovered, they're for us to enjoy. Grand Canyon, mountains, oceans, all of these things, they give God glory, certainly. But what else would they be there for? Our God is a God of joy. He wants us to enjoy things. And he loves to hear our thanksgiving. Vocal, physical, however way it's expressed. And then we want to remember that we're God's people. We belong. So many of us struggle in other parts of our lives with belonging. Whether it's in school. Whether it's in family. Sometimes we feel like we're the black sheep. Sometimes in school we feel like we're... Yeah, outcasts, sometimes at work, the cool people don't talk to us. Not here. By Christ, we belong. So much to be thankful for. We pray that our hearts are not just half full or three quarters full, but overflowing with joy and thanksgiving and praise when we understand how good he is. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this word, Psalm 95, but also many other parts of the Bible that express and give us words to express our thankfulness for you. Yes, sometimes praise and thanksgiving is loud and, and it's raucous, and, but also there's a quiet uh, thanksgiving that we experience, Lord, this, this dawning knowledge of your goodness. And sometimes we see it Sometimes we don't. We pray that you open our eyes to the wonder of your grace, the wonder of your creation, the wonder of belonging to you. At some point in the next few days, Lord, we ask for a sacred space just to thank you, to express our thanks to you. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the ways we can very literally and physically thank God is to look at our finances. And just like the, the message said, one of that's finance is one of those things where we say, this is mine and I can't, I can't uh, share it with anyone and I can't give any. But in scripture and just in, in practical life, we recognize that came from God too. So we return a portion of it to him, trusting that he'll provide more, but also just to thank him. We can praise him, we can come to worship, we can serve others, but every part of our lives can be worship. So we worship using finances as well to say thank you. Let's receive those. <laughs>
do acknowledge that everything good in our lives has come from your hand. And so we respond to that. And we offer these, these gifts to you. We lift them up to you. And we ask you to consider them our part of our thank you to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. So important, one of the main ways we can thank God is through prayer. So we want to take time to pray. I also want to give everyone here, gather, the opportunity to lift up something good. Um, we'll also take prayer concerns, like someone being ill or someone needing prayer, but I really encourage you to take some time. Just acknowledge, let me know with your hand, and stand up and thank God for something here in the, in the presence of his people. Mr. Frank? Uh, I, I actually thank God for everyone here has helped with the food pantry this past week. Lord, uh, you've heard uh, many thanksgivings uh, in this room. And uh, we thank you for the opportunity to, to say them verbally, to say them out loud, and, and to share it within the body here. And it strengthens us. That's one thing we want to uh, thank you, Lord, that you put us in this community. And uh, when we hear other stories of blessing and, and you moving in people's lives, it encourages us. It gives us more faith. So we thank you. We want to hear more of these stories, Lord. We ask you for your blessing on that. Remember, people we want to lift up, Lord, that need you. I want to pray for our friend Maria, comfort for her family, and giving thanks for uh, her life, or her mother's life, and, and uh, the peace that she experiences now. I want to lift up Michael, who broke his arm, pray for quick healing there. I want to lift up Sophia and John and their family struggles, be with them and give them grace. Lift up uh, Javon and others who are working on their marriages, and uh, we just pray, Lord, uh, you're a God of restoration and a God of, of wisdom and discernment, and that you promise to give those abundantly. Lord, we do lift up uh, many opportunities for fellowship tomorrow. Pray that it's peaceful, that it's life-giving, uh, not only from the physical nourishment of the food, but also the, uh, the bonds as well. Lord, there's so much to be thankful for. We just took a few minutes. And there's much more that we can say and, and be thankful for. So we, we want to thank you with our lives. We want every part of our lives to reflect our gratitude. We pray for the strength for that. And we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's use our voices to thank God with number 788. Now thank we all our God.
Reformed Church, we wish you a very happy Thanksgiving, good time with uh, family, friends.